this section of the gravel bar is pretty wide, and look how flat this is. You can definitely motor through here with the vehicle. Absolutely. Even today, you get in here uh, without any trouble. Just need a little ground clearance. Don't even necessarily need four-wheel drive. Got some recent looking erosion on the sandbar here. You can see where that slide has altered the course of the creek, forcing it to come down this way. And this is a case where it does happen, but traditionally it used to come around that side and go along the base of that bluff, but it was a soil failure blocks the area of the path and causes the water to come this way instead. And this is new erosion on the edge eating away at this. This side like failure causing a log jam that diverts the creek and sends it this way. And it has eroded the side. Potential road cut you think there? I think so too. Yeah. Gradual slope climb, open area. There's a little peak that comes in right there. Let's see if it fits. Yeah, it's still putting us back in the last clearing. It hasn't gotten a good fit since then, it looks like. Neither of them. Well, it looks like we're over a uh, third, getting towards the halfway there already. Well, all right, I, we got a good fix in here. The open area where we've seen is that the creek re-diverted. So, so we're up in here someplace. We're not quite to here yet, I believe. Where was that rebar that we found? The rebar is right down in here, and we we have a fix on that. Uh, actually, it doesn't really show up on this. Here, the white spot are areas of lower vegetation. For uh, topo map trivia, it's vegetation that'll hide an armored vehicle, like a tank. Uh -huh. So we're heading towards the uh, we're heading towards the part where the creek starts to head east, just yeah. up ahead. And we should have an intersection with a sizable creek a coming better, in creek from the path. from the left. Well, I like the way it's the, we got the ridge coming down here. It almost makes you wonder how far you can go through that woods to get up to the road. It can't be very far. What do you see on the map there? Uh, the old road. Yeah, the old road that was closed by 73, 12 in 10. Um, it's, it's paralleling the river just, you know, 100 and some vertical feet up, well, 200 and some vertical feet up at a distance of as little as a quarter of a mile, maybe so even less. Those guys actually might have been able to put in, this might be where Peter Byrne was talking about coming off Lonesome Ridge Road, but that's Lonesome Ridge right here. Right, that's still open. And this section in the dotted red, it, it was closed even in the early 70s. But it is very close and, well, what's this? This one doesn't say, it's usually 80 foot contours on this map, so maybe 150. Here's the GPS location of what we're calling the AH film site. It's a considerable distance down the creek from the other five sites. Yeah, we have to remember they, in the logging operation, they took a bulldozer up here at some point after the 64 flood and cut themselves a road of some kind, which was used to extract logs in 65 and 66, according to Al Hodgson. Also, my neighbor Jay Rowland. Uh, and this looks pretty flat. I would imagine they'd stick on the sandbar areas whenever they could, just for the ease. Drive. You can yeah. see Jim McLaren driving up this road here with yeah. Richard Henry in the Jeep. The brave souls. <laughs> but you know, there's so many good possibilities here. I mean, this could almost be it. You've got, you've got huge trees in the background. You've got an opening off to the right side in the distance where you can see daylight through the trees. Uh, we've got a little bend in the creek even. An old, an old root ball. Old root ball. This is a tough so job. So we had another dilemma here. Here we're trying to find five sites, right? And 
And now we're stumbling upon something that actually fits the description almost better than the actual Except other sites. The Patterson film was, she turns more eastward in the film. At the very end. Well, when we get around this bend, the river curves again. We have north, right? Mm -hmm. You said right about that? Yeah. Actually, more like that. That's north. Yes, the, that's north. So even north fits with the... Uh, north okay, fits so reasonably she, well. So this is moving to north, exactly. northeast. Exactly. She, she could have gone right up there. She's sitting right up on that bank, looking back down here. Right, and it's, it's and open, it's clear? It's open, it's uh, most everything closer than, than 50 yards Although is much younger than We don't than have 40 the dimension years. of the sandbar going back far enough is the problem. I think we do. Maybe I up think in, it's, in it's, there. I think, I, I just, just lasered that snag right there and it came in at 53 yards. That's 150 feet. That's plenty of room for, you know, for, for the reconstruction. So yeah. we got, a, we got a, a road that goes along, just like on the, uh, the picture, on the outside edge of the creek. And this road is actually following the creek, and here it is here, okay. following the outside edge of the creek. And why don't you film a vine maple while we're at it? And it's got vine maples. And there's, yes. Which would be red in the pattern. Absolutely correct. Oh. Not quite red yet. We're getting there. We haven't had a major frost event yet either. No, no, it's going to turn pretty quick. So what do you got here? This is the other. Right. This is Murphy's reconstruction of the film site from, I believe, Renee Hinton's numbers. And from the, from Patterson's, I guess, second filming location, showing you know, the maximum distance into the trees at the furthest point was about 192 feet, and Creature was 100 feet at you know, those famous 350-ish frames. And then most of these objects in the foreground are under 150 feet. The big so tree would be right The big here. tree would be back in, would be back in there. So this is a tight fit standing at this exact place, but backed up a little bit. Uh, we could easily fit 200 feet in here. Let's say back, up, uh, back to <laughs> just those trees right there. Let's let's humor each other and go look for a couple stumps. What about that Peter Burns? How does the burn picture match up to? You're totally growing a tail there with that tape measure. I know. Well, I like the the way these trees look right here. It compares really well with the Peter Byrne and Renee De Hinden shots. Ex exactly. Show. Let's get those out. Those are something I've never heard people comment on before. The way the light comes through from that direction. The, the geography, even the trees match up in a way. We, we've got the light, we've got the bend in the creek, which is what we see well, what do we on the see other right side. Here? And what do we see back up in here? We right. see quite a few big Douglas firs not well, right too far back in here. Creek here. That nice big stump there. And certainly the remains of the road, this fits as well as anything we've seen before, but there's several large Douglas firs right there. Right. Of course, that stump there in particular, it's big enough to be the big tree, but it's too dumb close right. to the uh, yeah, creek. The, the, the stumps are behind uh, the subject, talking... but still 50 feet or, or up to 50 feet in front of the tree line in the background. The stumps are? Yes. yes not so the big stumps. tree? No, the, the big tree is, is probably beyond 200 feet. The big tree is right at that edge though. Right. It sits up just above the bank. Yeah. So mm -hmm. we may be looking for a stump of the big tree or a fallen tree. It's a plausible film site. <laughs> Look, you got the big tree right over there and you have perch for the shot up the top part. Ian, can you scan through that thing to get a big bead on that big fur right back in there? That You'll one? See? Yeah, there's a huge one right over here. It's up to your right. I see. I don't think we'd get a reliable number. There's too much in front of it. But I would estimate that's the size the big tree ought to be in the film. Correct, because, uh, because of the size of the large creature. The size we got. Yeah, it's bouncing around between 20 to about 52, 55 yards 
Uh, so I, th I think I'm reading off of the tree at about 55 yards. Does that fit the bill? It would fit. The, the, that's 150 feet. Uh, and our maximum dimension at the film site is about 200 feet to the background. So if, if the camera position was a little back here, I think we get a distance uh, about, uh, about 200 feet total. It's, it's possible. All of these sites we've looked at on the upstream, uh, we're all having, you know, having to twist it a little bit. But there is room here. Bigfoot lives.